SOLIDWORKS Mechanical Conceptual. Here I'm going to do a radial engine design concept using the Mechanical Conceptual tool in this single modeling environment where you do everything in one environment, the assembly, the sketching, and the motions. I'm going to start with sketching a circle, just like I would in SOLIDWORKS. And then I'm going to go in and dimension that circle because I do know somewhere around the size that I want the engine block to be. From there, I can go out and grab the standard slot sketch tool to go ahead and sketch a slot. I can go in there and define that slot's constraints or parameters, just like you can in SOLIDWORKS. I can go in and pull on any side of the slot, either side, and resize the, the size of the radiuses as well. Once I do that, I can go ahead and pattern that slot to make the six cylinder that I want. Just a typical pattern for radial. And again I could adjust the size of the slot and it'll behave like a pattern should. I'll go in and do the boolean operations which is very similar to working with the contour select tool in SOLIDWORKS. Actually cut out some area for the crank part in the middle. Do the same thing, just do a little boolean operation. Now I've got a parametrically defined without the dimensions so I can kind of go and pull on one side or push on one side to resize the shape of it. And from here I can enter into the mechanical mode where I just start sketching in the other shapes. You notice the crank handle's green and the piston's more of a purpular, purple color. I can go in and continue with the crank. This will be again a second part. I can put the location where the rod's going to be pinned down to the crank in here. And I can make this the Boolean operation that we can go in there and do. First I'll dimension it so I give it a dimension so it stays so far so many millimeters away from the center. So I can add parameters whenever I'd like or leave them without the parameters on there and just constraints or no constraints at all and just leave them out there as sketched objects. So I'll grab these sketched objects and do the boolean operation to subtract those two so I have basically a crank. This crank would spin if you grab it and turn. It's just a 2D mechanism at this point. So what I really want to do is just connect that, that crank handle to the piston itself. And you can see what I want to do is actually constrain that piston to the center of the geometry of the slot. So I'll turn that on and go ahead and drag and drop the piston onto the center. So now that piston will move up and down that center, and if I turn the crank of the crank handle, you'll see it'll be behaving like the 2D mechanism. Although I, I do see some interference in there, because like I said, this is just a concept, so I can resize it just by pulling over here. I can actually turn my mechanism mode off, so I can just really crank on the piston, it'll take the rigidity out of the rod. And now I'll have a rod that'll be rigid again in the mechanism mode. You can see I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth from sketching to motions. Automatically it's all built within one environment. Whether you're sketching, whether you're in building parts, whether you're in building the assemblies, it's all in one environment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go in and pattern the parts that I want to pattern.
from the center of the crank arm. Put six of these in again. And since these really aren't going to be a parametric pattern, I want to go in there and delete that constraint. So that frees each one of these to be really their own object group in there. So I can just move these objects around, kind of get them stationary or wherever I think they should go, but could actually start constraining them right now as well, anytime. So different ways to constrain. You can drag and drop the geometry onto the centers that you want, and you can see how that mechanism is going to behave. You can start getting a real good idea of what type of radial engine concept I have in mind here. A couple more constraints to drag and drop over. I like to check them as I go along to make sure my my mechanism in my head is behaving like it should. In other words, I'm thinking correctly. Snap these last ones on in place. You can also use regular constraints just to click on what you want and pin it down just like in SolidWorks. Now this is where I can go in and really see the motions from a standpoint of more of a mechanism analysis. So I could even crank on the 2D motions and just try it out real quick with this real quick way of looking at it before I go create a motion study. Is my concept doing what, it, what I want? Yeah, I'm getting some good stroke distance in there and not having any interference that I can really see. And at this level of a conceptual modeling tool, this is what you're going to want. You're going to be able to want something that you can take from 2D and then automatically define 3D with it as well. So what I'm going to do now is take this 2D concept sketch and actually go into the assembly mode, even though it's still the same single menu environment, single modeling environment, I really should say. I can go in there and turn all these into individual parts. Now I could go through and tell it each part name or I could just make the main ones that I need go into 3D. doesn't really matter. I can go back and forth with this anytime. Get the ones now that I want and come back and get the other ones later or just do this all at once. So with this set, I've got the enough parts named where I can go in and accept this. And the ones that it automatically named, I can go in there on the left of the tree and rename them at any time. I just really wanted to grab the ones that I wanted. You can see it's still working like it's in a sketch environment. But from here, this is where I can go in and turn them all into 3D. And again, with this single modeling environment, all I really have to do is click on what I want and go ahead and turn it into 3D. And I have the same types of capabilities to go in there and do things up to surfaces. I can go in there and do a whole bunch at once. I could go in and do things that are uh, up to nexts. So basically just quickly going in and creating what I want in 3D out of that assembly. And what I don't want can stay in 2D and I could change it at any time. It's just another part in the assembly tree. But you can see the 2D and the 3D work together in here. So I don't really necessarily need to continue to make all my parts in 3D here. If all I really need to pass along to SolidWorks is one piston, one rod. 
I could go in at any time and continue to create the rest of this, but I can also go in and create a complete motions study for this as well. And you can see the 3D and the 2D working together. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick video on SOLIDWORKS Mechanical Conceptual and what this tool can quickly be used for that's different than the SOLIDWORKS environment or anything else like that. I think for doing what I've done here and, and conveying this radial engine concept quickly, this really is a beneficial tool to uh, not get tied up in assemblies and parts and all that stuff, but just do it all in one single modeling environment. Really has some big advantages. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.